Today I'm sharing 12 junk journal page ideas that simply work every time. They're easy for beginners and I use them to fill this. So this is my current journal. I'm still working on it for Junk Journal July, which is a daily prompt challenge that I play in over on Instagram. So I'll use the pages in this to illustrate the points and I'll probably also draw on a couple of other journals that are filled in the past. So I might draw on this one, which was for Junk Journal January, just to really bring the points to life. And I might delve into this one too, because there's some really interesting pages in here that I think will help. So the points I have written down, as usual, to make life easy. And I'm not suggesting that you slavishly follow them. These are not super prescriptive. They're not things to exact, exactly copy. They're great ideas for helping you because of three things. They're flexible and adaptable to your different supplies. They work for all skill levels. And most importantly, I think they'll help you develop your own style. The first suggestion I have here is about making the most use of your pockets. And by that I mean really make use of your pockets, both ones that you make when you put the junk journal together, like a small upturned pocket here, or perhaps I've got a larger one I can show you. Yes, I probably do. So you could make a bigger upturned page pocket so you can really put lots of goodies in it. I think I have a really big one here. Just really large, very wide, a page pocket that's formed when you make the signature of the junk journal. But beyond that, even when you put the signature in, you can add so many different types of pocket. And I really, really enjoy adding pockets. You probably know that already if you watch any of my make it and how to tutorials. So there is, of course, the most basic pocket. So even if you only have glossy book pages, you can make a pocket like this and stick it on a page. But why limit yourself to one type of pocket when there are so many? So you could add faux envelope pockets like this. So this has actually a pocket in the back. And in fact, I've doubled up here and added a little envelope behind it. Do we have any other pockets? I've got a double pocket here. So two simple ones that I've put together and then attached in. I'll have a look at that as a part of another example later. I put it a pocket behind an envelope that flips out. So this one I have made out of vintage paper, a book page, and filled that with some lovely goodies. This one has more little spaces to put things in. I've got a playlist on my channel with lots of ephemera. I'll link that in the video description box down below. Pockets are definitely one of my things. I think they're fantastic because they're really easy to make and you can adapt them and they just bring a page to life. You can fill them with all sorts of beautiful things. So I do recommend having a go at making pockets and then adding them. Here's another a flip out. Let's make sure you can see it. I've added this with washi. Again, a really simple one, the most basic pocket, just made from a glossy book page with the corners rounded and ooh, lovely foiled washi tape there. I've put a few little items inside it and it extends the page. So the first suggestion, enjoy making your own style of pocket using really basic book pages. Make the most of pockets. Point number two is about creating offline elements. And by offline, I mean making things before you come to put the signature together and fill any of the pages. So of course it's easier just to grab things and put them in when they're already made. But I actually may mean to make a point a little bit beyond that. You can make, using maybe packaging paper or wallpaper, even pages that you can use to decorate. So you could make something like this. This is something I made recently using Amazon packaging paper. And I made what I called a creative placemat. So I added elements 
lots of different supplies to create small and large images that I could then tear out and I just tore one out and I added it here as a flip. So this is an offline element that goes beyond envelopes and pockets and tags and belly bands. So you can even make almost the whole page. And not only was that fun, it was efficient. I felt like I really got great use out of the supplies that I have. So that's point number two. It's something a bit new and different. And that was creating offline elements. Point number three is hiding design components and using fold outs. And I think you just saw me do that a few times when I was illustrating some of these pages. Should we see if we can find any? I do like it because it makes a page interactive. Maybe we'll show you one in here. So a fold out on here, I've got a faux envelope pocket like that. I've tucked another envelope behind it. And actually, I've then added another pocket in here, which itself has a fold out. So it just makes life incredibly interesting. I've got a lovely little pad here with collage paper to tear off, or you could write on there, you could stamp on it. I've got a little bit of a tuck space here, and there's another pocket internally here. This is also the subject of a tutorial, this fold out pocket itself on my channel. So point number two is about fold outs and making things tactile and fun. A bit of a fold out here. Let's see if we can find another in one of those other journals. I find I've made so many pages I forget what I've done. I don't know what about you. Can you remember every page that you've created? So have we got a fold out? Bit of a fold here. Bit of a fold there bit of a, a gusset that I've added. Does that count as a fold out? There's extra fold outs here. I just love adding extra fold outs as you can tell. There we go. Another fold out there. So that was, oh, there's an extra one. I like him. What do you think of him? And then there's that one with some lovely watercolour paints behind. So Hide some of the things that you're adding. Make it interesting to find them and use fold outs. Insert extra pages. This is something I don't do very often, but I reached a point when I was creating the pages in this journal where I didn't feel like I had a page that just worked at the time. So I added a double pocket, I'll call that a page, and I've just used incredibly strong washi tape on the left hand side here and on the right hand side here. It was already joined as two pockets here, just two basic pockets. And I've inserted those because it, it worked for me to illustrate the particular prompt that I was working on, which is symmetry. So I needed to get these teal and pink colors to be on the right hand side to be the point of symmetry with the pinks and teals in this beautiful butterfly here. So if it works for you at the time, whether it's a book page or an extra element piece of ephemera that you've made, think about adding extra pages to your signature even when you've bound the signature in. Point number five, weaving texture. Something I've started to do a bit more of recently because I've never really been in a fabric person. I don't come from a sewing background, I've only just learned to use my sewing machine, but I do like to add bits of texture with fabric that I've either glued on or glued and then sewn on. And on this tag, I've added fabric at the top as a tab. It's actually got little bits of music note on it, which I think is really, really pretty. And I've also got this texture coming through from the mere shreds of what is actually an old curtain. And I'm really enjoying adding that extra element that's relatively new in my practices. So think about adding texture in your journal in some way. Use a splat box frequently. What can I say? So I have used a splat box in previous projects. 
let's see, on this page you can see a collage strip that I made and I've got little bits of splat paint on it so when I've made the collage strips they go into my cardboard box which has got lining and it collects the splats that I miss on the item and I tend to splat with gold paint and I use maybe some greens and some black for contrast just to make the images pop and on many of these pages you can see splats let's see if we can find one sometimes I do them at my desk and they do literally go everywhere so I have some on this you can see gold and green and I've just got a flower popping out from above three pretty rows of washi tape but I think it's got texture because you can see these little dots I saw this I learnt about this on YouTube it's not something I just knew I don't have a painting background but I do think adding splats use your splat box protect your desk is a really nice way to make a page look pretty on here I've added silver and bronze and gold you can see a few more splats I really love this page and I really enjoy splatting so that is point number six use a splat box frequently have it sitting behind you and don't be scared to use it point number seven if you're using prompts is allow yourself to adapt them to suit your supplies so this is more about ways of thinking and it's something I did want to share and I thought I'd illustrate it with this page so maybe symmetry which was the prompt would require you to have something on this page the same as this what I I just didn't have items that worked for that and that wasn't the way my brain was thinking so I thought about symmetry of colour the images aren't the same but it works for me and I feel like it satisfied the brief and this is not about an exam this is not about having the perfect answer it's about enjoying the process and creating something that you really love when I turn the pages on this so when I look at this and I feel it this has got wax on the paper I just love it and it makes me happy and it's because I didn't get too wound up about completely literal interpretation of the prompt so adapt the prompts to the way you think and to suit your supplies. Let's talk about experimenting with colour and maybe this is, if I do a quick flip, the journal to illustrate it. I know there are a lot of pages in journals and styles that are about this sort of vintage brown but there's something that's glorious for me in seeing colour and it means that I don't stick to just one colour when I fill a journal I don't have just the yellow ochres and the greens and the browns I go to town with bright colours you can see this is florist ribbon behind here I've got really bright lime green I've even got black that have splattered down here what about this William Morris paper just bright colours go to town with colour if that's what works for you and just enjoy the glory of mixing it all up so that was my suggestion for eight, experiment with colour. Stamp over digitals, what fun this is. I, I don't know whether it's something new. Let's see if I can find, there we are. So I've been adding a few digitals, I do like to use a few. This is a fairly simple page, again another pocket. I've probably got space to add a few more items. What do we get in here? I've made a little collection of pieces of paper that I think fit the brief of the particular prompt but the point on here let's put that back in is that I'm just putting the most delicate element of a digital here that's been covered by a stamped image this is quite a sharp image and I like it because it's botanical I like green it gave me the opportunity to color it in I like to put stamps over other papers that have already got some pattern on it 
it's particularly satisfying when you get those paints out and you have a play and I think using stamps makes it very very easy you don't need to do any hand drawing so get your stamps out stamp over the top and colour them in use your pencils use your gel pens use your watercolours use your acrylics whatever works for you get friendly with watercolour I cannot espouse this strongly enough there's probably paint on all of these pages somehow and it doesn't matter if they are your your children's watercolour paints if there's something you've treated yourself to I've got metallic paints here this again was a stamp and I've just got that luxury element coming through because we've got that metallic glean if I've made a pocket I don't finish there I think on here in this one I think I made yeah I made a pocket and the paper's quite white it's nice thick paper but it wasn't doing enough for me so I've got my I think these are my Arteza watercolours and I just daubed a little bit of blue because I've got some blue going on over here and maybe some blues that you can see here and then I've stamped over the top so I do use my watercolour paints whenever I can I think I've got something going on here just to cover up some of the whiteness going on and I fancied some purple I've got purple in the tab again I've got fabric and texture going on here so I felt that they went so I, I think watercolours are fabulous for just binding together and making a page look cohesive here I've got purple that marries up with the watercolour paint here and it needn't be watercolour acrylic whatever you have but use your colours use your paints just to really make those pages special and fit your style use bold focal points if you're struggling and you're having one of those days that the ideas just don't come then here's my little cheat idea I reach for a strong focal point like this bird here or indeed this bird and this is that a dragonfly so I remember when I was looking at this page and it I was struggling I didn't know what to do I think the prompt is fussy cutting and it wasn't going to work for me to just have one fussy cut image so I took a couple and I went really bold and then I looked at the colours in here and on this side and I added a piece of ephemera that I'd already made so this is a little envelope a little pocket really I've got some items in there feels like it yes I have some items to cut out and I've got the colours here in this page too so I feel it comes together but when I open this it feels like it works because I've got two really bold images so when you're struggling go for something big and then let the rest of the page adapt and work around it in fact I can see my splats of gold paint on there too so that was use bold focal points and my last point that I have alluded to is introduce fabric so fabric yes on the tops of tags I think we saw some a moment ago but I also want to add fabric that I have stamped on so let's go beyond just adding a tab at the top of a tag let's go beyond just adding the texture on the tag that we saw before stamp on simple white fabric and colour it in I've got a video again on that showing how I've done something like this simple stamped images that I've coloured with pens and I even used paint and I think it's something different that makes the rest of the page interesting you can marry up the colours with other images on your page this one is mirrored I've got a little bit of mirror there but I've got some nice fabric being introduced for texture makes you want to just spend time looking at the page 12 junk journal page ideas that I think work every time check out the playlist where I make lots of the items of ephemera that are in this journal and my other journals too I make tutorials every week I share lots of information to make it easy so I hope to see you soon